Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. We're on chapter 11 now, which is trigonometry. You can approach uh, trigonometry if you just have a little basic understanding of geometry. It really doesn't take much. Uh, trigonometry is, after all, the study of triangles and how to measure them. And in this section, 11.1, .1, we're going to cover something called radians. When you use degrees, which is, you know, you take this unit circle and you cut it up into 360 little pieces and each of those little pieces is a degree. Um, it's, it's useful because we have this experience since Babylonian times of using it, but as you progress in mathematics, you begin to understand that it's not a very natural system of measuring angles. And so we're going to use the area of a unit disc. So if we have a disc with a radius of 1, then the area of that disc is equal to pi. So that's where radian measures come from. And we can measure an angle inside of this disc by comparing the area of the slice of pi <laughs> that the angle covers. And we're going to call that. So if we have S here, we're going to say the area of S over the area of the entire disc, D, that's going to be equal to X over 2 pi. And so that angle x is that angle measured in radians. That's how we measure this. It's a very natural system. So if x was 2 pi, that would be the entire circle. Let's just write down some of the common measures here. So let's start with what pi angles, pi degrees would give you, pi radians would give you. So if we go pi radians, that's half a circle right? Because pi over 2 pi would be half of the area. So the same as 180 degrees. Let's use a different color for pi divided by 2, this nice red here. So if we take half of pi, that's going to be one quarter of the circle. Because 2 pi is the full circle, right? Let's go ahead and draw that, what 2 pi looks like with this purple. So we're going to start here, we're going to go all the way around, back to the beginning. A full circle is 2 pi. All right. And as your mathematical mind is engaging, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what's 3 pi over 2? Well, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 is a full pi. And if we go 3 pi over 2, start here, and we go all the way around 3 pi over 2. That's 3 quarters of the circle. And so we can do some quick calculations on the side here, equating uh, degrees to radians. So we have 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. I'll just put rad. 180 degrees which is a half circle, is pi radians, okay? And then we have 60 degrees, what would that be? Well, that's one-sixth or one-third of that, because you take that, 120 would be third. No, yeah, that's one-sixth of two pi, so it's pi over three. So it's one-sixth of the full circle. And 45 degrees is pi over two radians. And then finally we have 30 degrees which is half of that third, so that's pi over six radians. And that's a little table that you can keep in your mind. And remember, it's just x degrees equals pi over 180, because pi is half a circle, so divide by 180, and that's gonna give you um, times x radians. Okay, so if we had 180 degrees, you just take one pi over 180 times 180, let me do this formula a couple times so that you're familiar with how it works. So if we had 180 degrees, that's pi over 180 degrees times 180, which is pi radians. If we had 90 degrees, that's pi over 180 degrees times 90 degrees, which is equal, let's see, 90 divided by 180 is pi over 2, right? And if we had 30 degrees, that's pi over 180 degrees times 30 degrees. So 3 divided by 18, that would be 1 6 pi over 6. Okay, radians. These are all rads. All right. That is how radians work. And from here on out in the book, and here on out for you in your mathematics career, when you do uh, algebra, when you do calculus and anything else that has anything to do with angles, unless they specifically say degrees, they're going to imply radians. It's such a natural system. It makes everything so elegant and nice. I wish I could tell you about all the fantastic things about using radians, but I will not, not at this point. Okay. 
So this next section talks about um, what happens when we have a length of an arc. So we have a circle here. I should be using my, my compass to do this. I'm not very good at drawing circles. So the total length of the circle, so there's the length L of the circle, the diameter if you want to the, not the diameter, the uh, circumference, right, is going to be equal to 2 pi times the radius, but we're using a unit circle radius 1, so it's just the length is 2 pi, right? So if we have an angle of x radians, the arc has length. Um, when we take the length of the arc, we divide it by the whole circle, circumference, and that is going to give us x over 2 pi, okay? And thus, the arc length of a measure in radians, this is what's fantastic about it, gives you the amount of travel that it's passed over the circle. So let me give you an example here. This is kind of amazing. So let's say that you start here, and then you, so you measure this down here, and then you travel over here, right? So you've traveled this distance along the circle. And you measure that distance to, let's say, some y radians. Well, the length here itself is also y. So the arc length is equal to the measure in radians. So if you want to know how far the Earth has traveled around the sun with the unit circle where the, the length of the radius is the distance from the sun to the Earth, you just calculate how many radians you've traveled. You take the number of days in the year 365 divide by the amount of distance that you've traveled multiply that by 2 pi and you have yourself the distance you've traveled in uh, the units of the length between the sun and the earth pretty simple stuff uh, there is a little talk here he doesn't call it tau but he does mention it he said it would be convenient if instead of using 2 pi we just used some measure that was the entire length so we had basically tau, which is equal to 2 pi, and we measure it in this system rather than in radians. However, uh, there's a fantastic treatise on this that you can read on the internet, especially if you're more advanced in mathematics, you understand more about how this stuff is used. Uh, you just look up pi day or tau day. Sometimes you might see uh, the mention of a radian of a major angle. So we measure the angle x and we get the measure of 3 pi, right? And this doesn't really make sense. You can't have an angle that has more, an angle that's bigger than a whole circle, right? So when we do this, what we're, what we're talking about is this. So we go around once, that's two pi, and then we go around one more, another half circle, that's three pi, okay? So that's what we mean by three pi. And so typically when you see this, you can just substitute four x, anything. So you say x can be two n times pi, two pi times n plus whatever angle. And you can use this angle, which lies between 0 and 2 pi, for the angle instead. And on the other hand, you might see like angles y where it's equal to minus pi. Well, you can also say that that's the same as, let's see, minus pi be starting here going backwards. That's the same as pi. And typically in trigonometry, you can substitute in these, rate, these angles that lie between 0 and 2 pi, and the math will always work. So you can put in uh, measures outside of the 0 to 2 pi range, between the 0 to 2 pi, whatever. So typically you will see that our angles lie between 0 and 2 pi. But if we go outside of that bounds, just subtract or add 2 pi's until you get inside of that range. And that's pretty easy. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all you have to think about. Um, and that's it. That's all there is to it. I expect you to do the exercises here. They're not hard. They're very simple. Get comfortable with measuring things in radians. And uh, it, it, to be honest, it doesn't really matter much yet when you do these trigonometry exercises, but when you get into calculus, it's gonna matter a big time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Take care and bye-bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is part of a series on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can catch the playlist over here and you can find out how to support my channel over here. Thanks so much, have a great day, bye-bye.